finish as well. She's hot. Lisa, you know, has been one of the top lady players for the last few years, uh, even as young as she is. She's come out been very successful. She's come out at a time when the way she throws the ball, it is very important to be a power player out there now. Both these gals are young. Both of them have a lot of power, and both of them will play well. Again, this time, they've decided to let Wendy start on the left-hand lane. That is Lisa's prerogative on what she wants to do. She's going to make Wendy bowl first and finish last. Wendy starts off on 15, which has been her best lane. Leaves the 4-7, but trips the 4 forward, and she'll have a one-pin spare. It's a little bit high. I think you're going to see Wendy lets up. She likes this lane because she's been able to keep her spare up, you know, her speed up, and has been very confident. But this time she lets up a little bit on it. We're going to find out what kind of reaction we're going to get during a championship match. First time in five matches, she hasn't struck in the first frame. We'll settle for the spare. And now we'll get our first look at Lisa Wagner, 24 years old, from Palmetto, Florida, by way of Hillsboro, Illinois, a native of Hillsboro. Ten career titles. We mentioned one already in 1986. Match play record, 18 and 6. He defeated McPherson, we mentioned, 212 to 180 in their match earlier. 36th career TV appearance. She's got a bundle of records in LBPT tournament play. Lisa's concentrating. She just said she needs to concentrate, block everything out, and play her game. She will throw the ball direct, turn it very well, and will keep her speed up. She will probably be one of the best tests, I think, for Wendy so far today. I don't think she's a very seasoned veteran, and she's going to make very many mistakes. She comes up on the lane that's been a little bit tight. She moved in. The players are starting to use the track area a little bit more as the lights are drying out the lanes. In other words, less lane conditioner causes the ball to hook a little bit more. And Lisa took advantage of that right there on that time. She's going to move over on lane 15. The ball's hooking a little bit more. And again, she wants to make sure that she keeps her speed and stays down at the foul line when she lets go of the ball. Married to a pro, Kent, and she says that's helped. Giving her a lot of advice and encouragement. Here comes her shot. She needs to make a very sound shot. She does. She speeds it up just a little bit to get it to hold, you know, the line a little bit better. The six pin is not exactly, you know, driving out. It does not drive into the ten pin. It's what we call a weak ten in bowling. You'll see it here. The ball's going to hook a little bit late. She's got a little too much speed. The six pin goes out, starts to come back, just barely catches the edge of the deck and does not trip the ten. She'll move far to the left. She's going to shoot this spare cross lane. She will not hook the ball very much and try to cover it, you know, as very easily as possible. Lisa's an excellent spare shooter. She picks it up. For all her success, Rex, she has not won what she calls a major tournament title. Lisa last year, you know, was come up to the last night. She had a chance to make the TV show. Uh, one of the Japanese girls last year got up in the 10th frame. If she, the Japanese girl, would just have one strike, Lisa would have been on the TV finals. Instead, there was two strikes. She finished seventh, and she was the alternate last year. She told us Monday when she walked in that she was ready to play, and she was going to make the finals this year. And uh, she was a, a favorite pick with a lot of the, of the bowlers around here. Wendy comes back now. The ball is a little bit high. The four pin lays down in front of the seven, will not carry the high hit. And this is the first time in, in all the matches that Wendy's not started off with just strike after strike. The pressure may be mounting on her a little bit, and she'll see how she handles it. This ball, she let up just a little bit. See the ball go left and overreact in the last time. The four and the one, the head pin lay up against the seven. Picks up the spare. She's down a pin through the first frame. Her previous games against Costello, she struck in the first three frames. Against Patty Ann, she struck in the first six. Against Cheryl Daniels, she put four in a row together at the outset. She opened with a strike in her first uh, game with Ann Marie Pike. So a little slow start for Wendy McPherson here in her fifth and final match of the day. She's working on, you know, she will be doing 61 games instead of 56 like some of the other players. But she looks like she's a well-conditioned athlete. She said that she was in, in excellent shape and wasn't worried about the long, you know, the long grind. She did tear her thumb up a little bit in one of the matches. They went in and worked on her bowling balls and got them all up on that. Lisa, we're going to catch an eye on her as she gets ready to... Uh, Wendy's going to make the spare, moves left, comes back. Both these gals are excellent spare shooters. 
Lisa will not watch Wendy when she bowls. She does not want to see what happens. What she's doing most of the time, and at least I feel like when we bowled match play and, and watched a lot of times, bowlers do not like to watch their opponent. They don't really care about exactly what line they are bowling. They want to play their own game, and they don't want to get you know into a trap of saying, well, this ball reacted this way, and I'm going to do that. They want to play their own game, and also you don't want to watch your other opponent get breaks. So she'd be totally unaware, for the most part, except for some reaction of how her opponent is doing now? She won't see the result. Now, she will look over to Bill Vint, the uh, LPBT uh, director of marketing, who's our on-lanes coordinator, and he will, you know, he'll give her and tell her how much she's up or down or anything if she wants to know. Again, we've had a lot of eight tens left on lane 16. It's a tighter lane. You speed the ball up a little bit, the ball will not finish, and the 810, which is a pocket split, remains. Wendy, again, has been able to, seems like, dodge the bullet by not having any of the veterans come out and just apply the pressure, except for Patty Ann did not have the problems that some of them did. They come back around, they seem like they give her a little bit of an opening, and she's been able to take advantage of it so far. Lisa moves over, makes sure that she gets a 10 pin. She knows that every, every pin could be, you know, worth $6,000, and she wants to make sure that she gets her count. She's down nine pins through the first three frames on the open frame in the third. You know, Wendy has bowled uh, five matches. I think she's real relaxed on that. Between frame, between games, she moves over on lane 14. She cannot practice on the TV pair where we're bowling the finals. She has to move over on lane 14 and throw her practice balls. Then her next opponent comes up and throws their practice balls on the TV pair. But again, Lisa had six shots, and whether she was able to find out what the characteristics of the lanes were between practice and how they had changed as the match started, has been some problems. She needs to strike to get Wendy back on, and the 10 pin stays up. The six laid over on it, but it would not take it out. Through 56 qualifying games, Lisa Wagner had 1,500 more pins than did Wendy McPherson, but when you get to the finals, it's the last game, and that's it. Right. Again, Lisa throws the ball. The ball starts to hook up. It slides a little bit more. It does never catch a hold, does not grab a hold of the track area like it should. The six pin lays over on the 10. We've had more weak tens in the matches than I thought we would because the way the ball was coming on the backs, and Lisa has missed a spare. That could really hurt, couldn't it, Rex? That's a couple of open frames now. She's down 20, and Wendy could open up some room here. We've had back-to-back -back opens, and I think it's interesting. We're watching Lisa. She's very dejected and everything. Wendy went right to the ball rack. She picked the ball up. She's ready to shoot. The fact is, and she's trying to get the crowds moving around a little bit. She wants to get settled down. She's ready. She's just like a tiger. She's up there. She wants to get the ball and to put Lisa away. Laurie Nichols, the only previous amateur to win this title, 1972. And Wendy McPherson is within range. She still has some bowling to do, but she has the lead. Okay, she's throwing the ball. She wants to keep her ball speed. And look at her. She blows the five. I thought, Ron, right there, what could have happened with Wendy, Wendy might have been a little bit too pumped up. I thought she might come back and leave an 8-10, because if you get the ball left a little bit, the ball does not finish. She got it right into the track, kept her speed, and just destroyed the pins. Look at this, 18 years old, her concentration, she's ready to win. She's averaged 220 in her first four matches this afternoon, and is well on her way to another 200-plus score. Okay, she's coming up on her best lane. This is the one she really likes, and she just sticks the ball right in the hole. The seven goes down. And she's up 30 pins now, and Lisa Wagner has some work to do. She walks by Lisa, and the hand comes down, and she says, I'm, you know, up on that. Lisa had gotten up real quick, had not given her much time. The girls are bowling very fast today. We've had no re-racks. You know, they're not trying to do it. I think if it was me, if I would go right now, Lisa is entitled to re-rack the rack a little bit. I would slow Wendy down. I would not let her get up her as fast as what she is. She's on a roll. I try to do a little bit of psychological, but Lisa, again, will concentrate on her own game. Nikki Giannullius, the qualifying leader last year, waited and waited. Pat Mercatani came back, qualifying fourth, had the extra bowling and won in the championship, though it went to the final frame. The same thing basically taking place here, except we're looking at the fifth place qualifier, Wendy McPherson, the amateur, Four wins and looking at a fifth, up 30 pins. 
Lisa, again, like I said, is a power and speed player. And what's happened on lane 16, it's a little bit lighter. The ball is sliding on her. It's not finishing as well. She's left an 8-10. She's left a couple weak 10s, and now she leaves the bucket on the left-hand side. She'll move right a little bit, make the spare. I hope I'm... We don't like to be like basketball, but sometimes you, you know, you ice the automatically if someone's made eight or nine in a row. The once we mention it, then they turn right around and miss one. We did the same thing with Lisa on a spare.